Today in this Drone Masterclass I'd like to talk to you about SDMs. What are SDMs? Well the same question was asked to me by Donald Key. He wanted to know what they were and how useful they are in the workshop. So Donkey, this is for you. SDMs are sub datum memory. Basically all what that means is that in your digital readout you have memory allocation spots. A bit like on your calculator you can store a calculation, a value into your memory and then recall it later. This is similar. Some of the CNC guys they think it's a bit like work offsets. It is very similar but I'll just explain the difference. On your digital readout linear scale it's got a series of lines and each time you wind the handle one line moves and it clicks over. But also on that scale there is a single line, normally a single line, some of the Chinese scales are now having one every 50 millimeters. Normally you have one line and that's a reference line, ref on your digital readout. And that's like your home on your CNC machine. In your home you set the table this way, that way, and then all your coordinates are off the machine coordinates. But then when you have it on your display, it's in the work coordinates. So deep inside the memory, the uh, controller, it still remembers where it is from home. It just shows you in the display what it is. You can have a work offset, so that would be like in the vice. Set it up with your edge finder, click, 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 zero. If you decide to have a master setup, so in other words, you always put your vice, always a vice on, always the same vice and always in the same position, and you don't unbolt it. You just put other holding devices on like this. This is the perfect setup. So what you do is on your display you have absolute and increment. Now the display when you move the handles is incremental mode. In other words from here to here to here to here to here to here. To fully harness the versatility of your SDMs is when you set up your datum on your vice or the item that's going to be permanently most of the time on your machine. Go into ABS mode and it's a button there and you'll see ABS. This is the distance of where that chuck is at the moment from there. You set that up to zero. So you, you clock up your data edge of your vice, go into ABS, set it to zero. So that is basically setting it up to the home position like on a CNC machine. So that now comes in a sort of protected layer storage area down below. To get the incremental and your ABS set to the same spot, you just zero both of them. That's what you need to do at the very start. And then whatever problems you have later when somebody turns the power off and winds the handle, you can find the reference of the single line on the scale. Then from there, it will know the work offset this datum as the ABS position. So that ABS in the sub area doesn't really change. So you, you can move around, change all your numbers, add 50 mil to it, blah blah blah, but it still remembers that number. That is good to find. You've set something up, you set five for five, you've knocked the handle when it's switched off. Oh, what am I going to do? You just go back to ABS and you'll all find the, the original position then you go back and everything's sweet. That's the setup to get it bulletproof. So I had a job where, and then this why I waited so long to show Donald, Doggy, the setup. I had a making up little jaws for the DuPont connectors, crimp connectors. This style I didn't like, so I had to make up little jaws, anvils on the turret. So I needed a series of setups draw it up in SOLIDWORKS and then rather than doing a drawing I just put down the relevant information. Now that now becomes the second part of being useful with SDM. It also depends on how you draw things up. An SDM allows you to machine things the way you would have drawn them up. For example, I'll just show this image a four stepper motor mounting plate. The four groups of holes are the same. With the CNC machine, it will set up that datum 
and it will always go from there. So all your measurements are from there. I'm just talking about the readouts, not whether you're an incremental mode, absolutely, you know, just where it's taken from. So if you look at your G code, you know, it'll be 50 mil to there, 75 from there, 26 from there. Whereas when you, when you draw up something on this particular one, have your outside plate. Okay, what do I want? I want these mounting holes. You look up the chart for the stepper motor, NEMA size, that's 31 mil across and 31 mil down. The holes in the middle, great. You work out, okay, the motor's that big, I'm going to put it up here, and I worked out 40 mil, 40 mil. So from the from both edges, 40 mil. So you draw that up in SolarWorks, do your plate, do your holes, bang, like in this drawing. Then you say, right, I want a, a gap between each one, all right, I got four of them, so I'll just do a linear pattern. So this one's 70 mil across and 70 mil up, bang. So on the drawing, it only has the original position, same up here, 70, 70, 70. But if you go in the absolute CNC G-code type thing, every dimension is taken from that point. So when you come to your digital readout, 172 and a half millimeter, 184.2, 278. So you have to work it all out. Sometimes you might do the X instead of the Y and you're halfway drilling the hole, jeez should be over here. That's why I always mark out hole positions with a text of colour first just to give me a rough idea. The SDMs help you machine the way you draw. You would put your plate in. Now we, we know the datum. We'll call up the SDMs. So we'll just go to the SDM button on here. Okay. So now we're in the SDM. So we go SDM. This has got 200 SDMs, so we'll go down to 100. As you can see, there's no number, so if you want number 100, you have to go 100 up or 100 down. So we'll go down to, go 180. Okay. So you've clocked this up. Yeah, okay. We'll go SDM 1. So we zero your axis. So now you know center point is it on that data. So now we know that it's 40, 40. So we move the table Oh, I'll just make it 10, 10 for you. There you go. Like in a drawing 40, 40, but we're just using 10, 10. We're in the center of the hole. So you just go to the in this well SDM up to the next one zero zero so SDM you're now in the center of the hole you know it's 31 and if you 15 and a half is a half so then what you have to do is wind wind the table 15 and a half that way 15 and a half the other way 15 and a half that way 15 and a half that way and draw your four holes I want to move the 70 you go back to your 2, zero, 0, or you don't even have to do that. You can go to your 70 position. I will make this one 15. You pop that up at 3, zero, 0, When you set up your SDMs, I always like to go 0, 0, 0, 0. Usually from the, usually from the start of the first one. So that way, you can always go back to the data position instead of having heaps and heaps of numbers. So set up your data, put zeros in for SDM 1 to 10 or how many you want, then move to your first position, go up one SDM, so SDM 1 to SDM 2, zero that, that's your center of your hole. You don't have to SDM each hole, because you're backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, the main thing is the center hole. And now in SDM 3, you then just move your 15 and a half, 15 and a half, 15 and a half, 15 and a half, and that's those four holes. Then you go up to the next one, you move 70 from there. 15 and a half, 15 and a half, 15 and a half. So instead of having to remembering all those positions for all those 5, 10, 15, 20 holes, you only have to remember 40, 40, 
70, 15 and a half. And it's all spot on. You might come up and you go, oh geez, I putting the job back on. I want to make a, the next size up stepper motor. So the holes are different. You just put the job up, you know your hole position, you just go to S SDM2 and you go to SDM2. SDM3, you go to SDM4. Bang, bang, bang. Suitable. And then you might have the job and it's done but you're not quite sure so you put another job on go up to SDM 10 10 range SDM 20 SDM 30s so each job depending on how much dimensions you have to move around each section you can have 10 in the 200 so you can have 20 jobs permanently in there remembering which ones they are is is a difficult bit but you, you can write that on so if it comes back and a customer or somebody says, oh, you bored this too small. I need an extra hole here. Three mil from there. Well, no setup. You just put it back in and bang. Away you go. So that's where the jobs you do are useful. Second one is okay. Donkey used to click setup and then do his job. 45, 75, 150. Or then he may put another a job holding fixture. So then he, he would have to go over, clock that up. So he lost that position because he was just stay, staying in the incremental mode. He wasn't using the SDM. So he'd have to clock that up. So then he, if that job come back, he, he would have to set it, clock it up, set it up all the time. In, a, in the fixture, I had to make up to hold the little drawers. Some of them had to be on an angle and that sort of thing. What I did was, I put the collet fixture on the rotary table and the rotary table on parallel strip and machined it there. Now that's a lot of stuffing around. Now if you're smart, on your rotary table, you will mill flats. So it will sit square in the vise. Or on the table, or on the edge, doesn't matter. Same as your bin jig, mill one face down the bottom. Parallel and all that. Doesn't matter what size. Then what you do is you measure from that face to the center line. Both directions. This one's got a little flat on here. So you write that down. It's a good idea to engrave it on there. So it's engraved on there. So you set your SDM here, number one, zero, zero. We go to SDM5, let's say, you know that from there to there is 50 mil and from there to there might be 45 mil. So you just put it in your vise, touch that face flat with that face, lock it up, go in there and 45 and you add that to X and you add it to Y. So that's how long it takes you to set up this into that. You can do this job, you know the center of that, you can do that job take it off and you haven't lost your datum for that one. Same as with the spin jig, it's got the center, the center line. You will want to know where your tool is from there and it's round and you've got to go and touch it up and all this sort of stuff. You just get your edge finder, come down, touch that flat, bip, subtract your ball. You've measured that height previously and it's engraved and it's 22 mil or 55 mil. You just move it over and you're in the center line. Perfect. So you measure these things once accurately, mark them, store the dimension somewhere and off you go. That's how useful STMs are. Each group, hole positions, edges, etc. You can use that for that job and it's so much easier. Come back later and use it. Or now I've got this job and it is set up. This is set up. This is set up. I can set this up and it's in here. I put a job in. So to make the holder, it required several, like there's one job in here now, another job, mill and a half in there, another job there. So productivity, ease, accuracy, less stress. What more is there to wish for? Now that's how it is for the mill. We'll just go over to the lathe. I'll show you how you can use the SDM on the lathe. So on the lathe, you weren't really using the same as on the mill. On the lathe, use it as your tool offset. So you would set up your tool, touch off on whatever, or on the center line. So you would set up tool number one, and that would be SDM one. So then you would then go up, SDM two, SDM three, SDM four, SDM five, 
Now, as you can see, you won't have 200 tools. You may, but you may not. But if you've got a gang tooling fixture, you can have STM1, STM2, STM3, etc. Or STM30, 31, 32. Left hand tools can be uh, STM20, STM21, STM22, STM23, etc. You would do it that way. As turning is normally off a date and face, and you normally go back and it's really the cylinders with steps in them, you know, taper, or maybe a radius. They're useful, quick change, put it on, zero, tool wears, just go in SDM, whatever, change the number, and you're away. Take a cut, measure it, enter that in. So it's just a method for tool offsets. On the mill, it's a lot more versatile. It's more for coordinate offsets for the various types of machining. So Don, I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.